Good day. In this video, I'm going to be talking about AEG Power Tools. I'm going to give my opinion on what I think about them after seven years ownership, how I think they're going as a brand in Australia and New Zealand, and ultimately what I'm going to be doing next. Now to start off, I want to give a bit of background about how I've ended up with AEG Power Tools. The company I worked for when I when I first started buying Power Tools predominantly used AEG. So it was quite an easy sell for me really to get onto a platform that I'd be able to share batteries and, and other skins with, with some of my colleagues. AEG in Australia and New Zealand give uh, a six year trade warranty, which seemed like a great deal um, straight off the bat. So even though I left the company that I was working for at the time that were predominant with AEG Power Tools, I still sort of stuck with them after that so I moved away from having to work on the tools and I've become more of a sort of hobbyist and, and DIY and these tools have come in handy over the years. So to the uninitiated AEG is, is essentially the overseas brand of rigid power tools that they've got in, in America however it's got nowhere near the range that you see coming out of America but I suppose the good thing about it is that if you wanted to parallel import um, into Australia, New Zealand, the, the tools, the batteries are compatible. However, uh, I suppose you've got issues around warranty and, and repairs and that kind of thing. So as you can see, I've amassed a pretty reasonable collection of tools, but I reckon I could categorize them in three ways. So at the top end, I've got groundbreaking, even if it's not been properly executed. I've got average, but okay. And then I've got absolute trash. So if I just do a re-jig up and show you what I'm on about. So even broken down like that, you can see it's, it's not all so bad, right? So on the top end, I've got groundbreaking. I've got average, absolutely run of the mill, and then you've got trash. So it makes absolute sense to me to talk about the groundbreaking tools first. So first up, simple AM, FM radio. It's small, it's compact, it'll go for a million years. The great thing about it, when I first got this, I, I worked with a lot of small excavators. Fits perfectly behind the seat. You go all day, yeah, come wind, rain or shine, it's just sort of kept on going. It's a bit old school, still, you know, you slip your, slip your phone in there, bang, good to go. No Bluetooth connectivity, but I think that would have been an easy thing to shoehorn in over time. Next up, this light. This light has got the power of a thousand suns. Really easy to move around, nice and lightweight for what it is. It's got these grappling hooks, which, you know, stick to a fence, stick to some rafters. Tripod mount at the bottom, put a little little holes there at the bottom. Um, that I've just basically, you know, popped a couple of screws around the garage, left them slightly overhanging, and you can move this thing around with me. Love this thing, comes with me everywhere. Next up, backpack sprayer. Not gonna lift it up and bring it to you because it's really quite heavy. However, I live on uh, on a back section. Lots of stones, lots of weeds. That thing there, it saves me having to walk around pumping. Whip that one out once a month. Quarter of an hour, bang, done Done the whole section. Doesn't get too overgrown with, with weeds there. Absolute game changer that. 18 gauge Brad Nailer. Great thing about this, price point under $500 here uh, in New Zealand, but it goes up to 55 mil. At least I think it does. It goes up to two one eighth inches. Fifty five, isn't it? Two one eight. I think it goes up to fifty five mil. However, two and an eighth inches. Last but not least, on the groundbreaking is this multi tool. Now. The multi tool itself isn't, you know, isn't out of the ordinary. It's, it's got a good, good system for changing the blades, so that's all in there. Although I've got myself trapped in there a couple of times. However, this is where it really comes into its own. AEG was smart enough to design it so that these heads can be removed, so the oscillating tool itself could become something. So for me, that means it's also my jigsaw. Simple as that. Bang, done. And now it's a jigsaw. There was also a recipro saw. There was a right angle drill, right angle wrench, uh, right angle um, impact driver. I feel like there was more, and they were cost effective too. It's about two hundred and thirty-ish dollars for the unit, hundred bucks a pop for the for the different heads. Great piece of kit, and and you know, I mean, when you want to travel compact, you've kind of got a few different things in one there. These two. 
Ah, drills. This does impact speedy speedy. This one does hammer drill, making holes, that kind of thing. These are absolutely average in what they do. Um, no complaints, but no, they're not winning any awards either. Um, circular saw. Conversely, this is rigid. I've got this from somebody who parallel imported it. It was actually broken for a while, but I managed to work out that something had gone wrong within there and sort it myself because there's no hope of getting somebody local to do it. Next up, Reciprosaur. This is a this is a beast for what it is. It's not brushless or anything like that. Um, it's had a lot of abuse over seven years, but it hasn't let me down. But again, it's not it's not award winning, but it's, it does the trick and it was at a good price point too. And lastly, in that range, blower. This gets probably more use than anything else. There's actually nothing wrong with it. It's not, but it's. I wouldn't f categorize it as as groundbreaking. Um, it does a lot of work around this um, around this garage, just sort of sorting the place out. Also came with a little adapter, so you know, you, when you're blowing up a rubber dinghy or what have you, you've got that. Well, you've got blowing up there. Of course, you got blowing up there, haven't you? Isn't it? Blowing up here, and then put the adapter to that side when it's time to go home. Suck it out, uh, as it were absolute rubbish. I thought it'd be a good little purchase, you know, crawling around attic spaces or, or something like that, under underneath floors. It, it, it's shite. I, my other light meant this thing, just rubbish. It points, points up to the sky if you want it to, or, or forwards. Um, I honestly wouldn't waste my, waste my time with it. it. It's $60 of absolute garbage. Um, thought it'd be a nice little addition, but don't waste your money. And lastly, vacuum. Do they call it a vacuum? Handheld dust extractor. It, it doesn't seem to pick anything up. It's noisy, and I don't mean like a little bit noisy. I mean, if you wanna quickly whip something out, you know, a bit of dust out of your car, you're gonna to need to put hearing protection on. Bulky, heavy, just, this is not what I was hoping it was gonna be. I thought it'd be a nice little thing to have for, you know, keeping keeping the truck tidy and picking up a little bit of schmutz around the the workshop and what have you, but wouldn't won't waste any tin on this, which is probably lucky. So this takes me on to my next point. So my next point is this, and this is an important one. If I was to bundle all of those tools back together in in, in one motion, right? So they look, you get them all in one shot. Now, I'm gonna start removing tools that have either been discontinued or gone up in price. So as you can see, I have just removed the, almost the majority of the tools that are any good. So down on the floor, what I've got, loud dust extractor gone, prob probably a good thing. Reciprosaw, non-brushless cheap one, gone. The oscillating multi-tool that I love, that has the changeable heads, gone. Little radio, cheap, easy to throw in, in, into your tools, gone. And then backpack sprayer, increased in price by a hundred bucks, a third of its value, it's, it's, um, it's, it's astronomical. So for me, this herein lies the problem. Tools are being removed and not replaced, nor any murmurs of of anything being introduced. I have absolutely no problem with rigid power tools. In fact, rigid tools on the whole, they are a gold standard in what I do for a living, which is which is gas. We have multiple of their pipe threaders. I myself have a, a fair few rigid hand tools. Let me show you. Like I say, these guys are the are the gold standard in plumbing hand tools. And without hesitation, I, I've paid a lot of money for these but I know I'll get a long time out of them. I mean, you can replace the drawers eventually if you need to, but I'm already four years into owning these uh, and they're still like they're brand new. Which brings me back again to the, to the rigid AEG problem. There isn't the range in Australia and New Zealand and nobody knows if they're ever gonna bring it out. There's some notable absences into the lineup. There is no cordless table saw. There is no cordless mitre saw. There is no track saw. So this brings me to another problem with AEG power tools here in New Zealand. Now, as far as I'm aware, and this does go back a few years, however, they have one repair agent, just the one. 
and it's not even in the city that I live in. Now I live in the, well depending on facts or figures, the second or third biggest city in the country. I definitely live in the biggest city in the island, yet when my drill broke, I had to send it away. Send it away to another city, there was no nothing I could use in the meantime and it went away five hours south of here to Dunedin and I didn't get it back for six weeks and it was something pretty simple it was just the, the flicky button on the top and it was within a week of getting this drill I'd noticed I think it was broken straight out of the box but that's on me I didn't notice straight away yeah that was frustrating and luckily for me that that hasn't happened too many times but I'll tell you what has happened the battery falls out of this or comes slightly ajar if you if you go into if you're working it too hard. My final gripe though, there is only one retailer in Australia and New Zealand where you can buy these power tools, which is which is Bunnings. And although there's a, a good few stores, the lack of competitiveness in the market means that there's no way these tools are ever getting any cheaper. Only when they're running them out, which is annoying because they don't seem to replace them with something similar. All their competitors in the market have multiple stores you can go to. So your Makita's, your Milwaukee's, your DeWalt's. You can get them from multiple stores, which means you can price match. It means that they're going to throw specials on because they're going to want you to buy the tools from them. However, Bunnings have no obligation to do that with AEG. And ultimately, it's it's driven the price up. They've, they've almost got a monopoly on it. And there's a sunken cost fallacy when it comes to these power tools that once you're in with one brand they keep you there you've got the batteries they're one of the most expensive parts of it and over time you're just sort of cornered in with it however I'm going against that and I've already started to, to merge to another brand so one thing that does work in their favor is the six-year warranty as far as I'm aware that's still the best on the market however as I, I was yakking on before warranty is good and everything but when you've got to send it away for six weeks when you need that tool to do what you need to do no use to you at all so where this leaves me now is the question of of what next <music> So for me, I did I did a reasonable amount of research. I'm quite fortunate where I work that all the major brands are, are, are covered within the guys, so they've all got their sort of um, their pluses and minuses. So I, I asked everybody their opinion of the tools that they do own. Price checked all of them for, for you know the ones I was gonna you know want next into the future. I also looked at the sort of secondary tools that you, you start to think of. Um, you know your sort of battery garden tools. Your your more sort of specialised one-offs uh, and that kind of thing. I looked at what they've got upcoming, how good their social media profile is, what, what these companies are offering to the New Zealand consumer. But ultimately, I did decide to go with Makia. And the only thing that's really holding me back with that is their lack of framing nailer. Gotta be honest too, the AEG one does look good. However, they've got everything else I want represented. I'll certainly be in the market for a track saw into the future. I've got the drills covered already, I've got the router covered, and then little tools like, you know, sort of your lights, your planers, your easy to move with hand handheld tools are, are all reasonably well covered with Makia. Um, they're also at a good price point and because they're represented in all the major stores here in New Zealand They've got good competition It drives the price down and it makes it accessible for somebody who realistically is, is a hobbyist on the other side of the coin too There's still you know the, although I've picked Makita as, as my new sort of main one to go to if AEG do buck their game up and bring something out I've still got six batteries and um, and you know, I'm not going on a on a a process of throwing any of these tools out and, and replacing them needlessly I'll, I'll wait till they die you know or just keep keep using them you know there's no there's no impetus for me to immediately replace I've, I've now just found myself with another platform to look at their range when I'm when I'm in the market for a new tool I've also learned that the sunk cost fallacy is a, is a, is a bag of dead cats I'm not loyal to any brand if if the price fits and the, and the right tool for the job falls outside of these brands now I'm not going to hesitate to go to them yeah there really is a notion that you you're supposed to pick a tool brand and stick with it um, Makita did it here with the apprentices of the uh, of the country about a year or so back and to one of the sort of apprentice agencies they um, they sent a three tool kit to every apprentice in the country you know drill driver um, angle grinder and, and some batteries you kind of got that feeling that they've done a bit of a power play there you know they give them a thousand dollars worth of tools but then they've locked them into the batteries for life then right that there is a big notion with a lot of people is that you pick one and you stick with it but you know this, this, this isn't your wife mate you, you can you can broaden your horizons and you can make it work for your pocket and for you you know for, for you in your space <music> So really, to conclude this video, probably what my, my, my biggest problem with AEG is that they're just having a bit of an identity crisis. They came onto the scene, they offered 
dirt cheap prices, a six year warranty and a, and a reasonable range and, and tools being added all the time and it got a few people excited so much so that the company I work for heavily invested in, in that range and then anybody like myself that, that also invested into that range I find myself seven years later staring down the barrel of almost sort of having completed the set um, and when there's tools that that, that I want that aren't represented in that space I've now got to look to another platform and you know I, I mentioned a few before that I'm, I'm very interested in having a battery drop saw you know miter saw um, and a battery track saw they're, they're two things that I would get a lot of use out of um, and, and I'm very much interested in and unfortunately AEG haven't come to the party with that and then like I discussed before they've removed a lot of tools that I feel are a groundbreaking that uh, a better you know best in their class or something that other brands aren't really thinking about um, innovations um, uh, and the like and then you've got the 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 price point at the moment with only being in one store no competition and driving that price up for the the backpack sprayer to have gone up by a hundred dollars to have removed a bunch of tools that um, weren't brushless replace them with brushless only and sort of ostracized that entry-level part of the industry I just think that AEG themselves are having a bit of an identity crisis and I'm not prepared to continually spend money on, on a company that isn't really pushing their way into the market. They've shown in America they can be the leaders in a, in a, in a lot of different tools, um, especially around plumbing gas fitting. They've got handheld band saws, they've got Pexel guns and, and things like that. that you know, although Milwaukee have them, if you're already on that platform, you would love to see them, in a, and especially the space that I work in. But they've just not come to the party. They've sort of given up on us, really. Although they're bringing out, you know, the, this framer nailer they've brought out does just look amazing. The brad nailer that I've got is a great tool. I've, I have no complaints with it at all, but it's just not quite enough. And if you, you look at the likes of Makita, DeWalt, and Milwaukee, and the, the range of tools they're bringing out, and, and, and as often, I just don't want to continually be felt being like I'm stuck in that corner. So what are your thoughts on the matter? Um, are they represented in your part of the world? Um, are you sitting there in America watching this video thinking, actually, mate, Rigid are pretty good. Let me know. Uh, are you in Europe? I, I, I know AEG have been brought out in Europe, but I just don't really, I've not seen anything to say whether it's good or bad. I know you've got a much broader broader range of tools there. And in this, you know, the space that I'm in, a, a you know, am I missing a trick by not going fast at all? Let, let me know your thoughts. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.